All right, and we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening po sa inyong lahat, and especially good evening po sa inyong lahat na nandiyan sa Pilipinas. And of course, we are back again for another discussion of our general education, professional education items, those items that you were asked to answer yesterday okay, or last night. Um, now, again, today is the 18th of October, and you can see all the social media accounts of Gurung Pinoy on your screen. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook as Gurung Pinoy. You can also follow us on Instagram as Gurung Pinoy PH. And of course, you can follow us on TikTok as at Gurung Pinoy. Okay, so please do follow, subscribe, and of course, like our social media accounts. Now, before we start with anything else, let us first have our opening prayer, Panimulang Panalangin. This time, this was prepared by Mom Eunice Carbajal. Please join me in our prayer. Isang magandang gabi sa ating lahat mga kaguro. Samahan niyo po ako ngayong gabi na manalangin. Damhin natin ang presensya ng ating Panginoon at umpisahan natin ang gabing ito ng may buong pagpupuri para sa Diyos na nagbibigay sa atin palagi ng gabay. Tayo po yung manalangin. Panginoon, maraming salamat po sa lahat ng biyayang natatanggap ng bawat isa sa amin. Ngayong gabi, gabayan niyo po kami habang binabalikan yung mga items na nilagyan po namin ng karampatang kasagutan sa aming mga answer sheet kahapon. We pray na sa gabing ito ay mas marami po kaming matutunan at sa mga makakasama po namin, salamat po sa paglalaan po nila ng oras para sa pagre-review at paghahanda para sa let examination sa susunod na taon. Salamat po sa buhay nila, Ma'am Mek, na ginagamit nyo for us to learn continuously and for us to prepare for the let. Lord, ikaw na nga pong bahala sa kanilang pamilya, patuloy niyo po silang pagpalain at hayaan mo po na sa gabing ito ay magkaroon din po kami ng fellowship o pagkaroon po kami ng maayos na um, pagsasama. Ma-enjoy po namin yung review at hindi po kami ma-pressure. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so thank you so much, Ma'am Eunice Carbajal, of course, for preparing our opening and closing prayers on Sundays. Okay, so we start with some of the things that we need to discuss first before we go to our um, items, the ones that you've answered last night. All right, now again, all the exclusive materials go straight to GROW. GROW is Guru Pinoy Review Online Workgroup. If you don't know what GROW is, if it's your first time, maybe second time to watch us, you don't know what GROW is. GROW is Guru Pinoy Review Online Workgroup. This is our exclusive FD group where we send all the materials that I've discussed through the live stream and not only these materials, but also some other material materials which we know can help you pass the lead. We are studying Guru Pinoy and we've been this business for more than 10 years already we've made we've helped uh people pass not just the let also the civil service examinations the mtop competitions the entrance exams and we we know that we are very capable and we are doing our best to make you pass the let okay so my name is mom Max Aison Manai. i am a teacher by profession i teach science i used to, used to teach in ateneo de iloilo you, i've also taught in saudi arabia now I'm teaching in Manning, South Carolina. This is my third year of teaching here. And my husband, Sir Mix Manai, is also a teacher. He's a college instructor. He used to be teaching in private uh, colleges in Iloilo. And of course, his major is math. My major is science. Okay, so we are here to guide you and help you pass the lab. And uh, one of the main ways for us to help you is not only the live streams, but also giving you all the materials that we're discussing through Grow. Okay, now it is very easy for you to become a member of Grow. All you need to do is to pay 500 pesos. That's a one-time payment. That's one-time payment. Po. You don't need to pay it much. 
monthly, not 5,000, 7,000, etc. You can pay through Palawan, Cebuana, or ML. You, all the details can be found on your screen. You can also pay through a super chat or super sticker whenever you watch us live on YouTube. Okay, so those are some of the ways that you can become a member of Grow. Now, once you have paid, just send us a private message. I repeat, please send it, send it as a private message through our official Facebook page, which is Guru Pinoy. And then we are, of course, send the receipt, the, the picture of your receipt. And then, of course, we are going to be adding you to grow. Now, please be patient if we don't uh, add you as soon as we can or if we don't um, readily reply to you. There is a time difference of 12 hours between the U.S. and South Carolina. And so sometimes when you are texting us or um sending a message to us we're sleeping okay so please be patient as soon as we see it then and as soon as we verify that you have paid then we are going to add you to grow okay so that's grow now another thing even if you are not a member of grow of course you can still watch our videos but of course uh you do not have um an easy access to the materials that you can download and print but we also have some other stuff that can help you, not just you, but even your kids. If you have kids that are um, in their elementary or maybe high school, we have one program which we call MASH. This is Mojo Assistance for Students Help Desk. This is free. All you need to do is to comment, post a picture of a question. I will be posting MASH again tonight. And then, of course, you can just comment the pictures or the topics that you have there. Please be specific. If you can post a picture that is going to be better and then, of course, I'll be choosing some topics for me to make a video on so that it can help your um, student or your, your child understand the lesson. I can um, explain the lesson through our video, okay? So, again, that's Module Assistance for Students Help Desk or MASH. That is still a free program from Guru Pinoy. Now, uh, we also have the science snippets. Science snippets naman po. These are from my actual videos from my classes here in the U.S., from my Bio 2 and my physical science honors classes. And um, I'm also giving this because these are still covered in the lab, okay? These are very useful, very useful videos, okay? I repeat, these are very useful video videos. And so I'd like to also watch it, okay? Even MASH, even if um, you're just watching MASH, MASH is for graders, also for high schoolers, but these are still covered in the lab. All the topics are covered in the lab. Now, another thing that's exciting that's coming coming up is your mid review exams that's going to be 200 items so 100 items gen ed and 100 items prof ed that is going to be on december 12th until 30th of 2020 but um the mid review exam this is going to be um exclusive for your grow members okay so this is exclusive for our grow members so we are going to be uploading the items in grow and then of course we will give them some time to answer the items then we are going to discuss it on december 12th and 13th okay that's december 12th and 13th if you're not a member of grow then of course you can still watch the live stream discussion but of course you are not qualified for the cash prices okay so there's going to be a cash price of i think three thousand pesos uh, plus some gift certificate for the first prize and 2000 for the second prize, 1000 for our third place, third placer. And then there's um, some consolation prizes, I think, just gift certificates for the fourth until 10th placer. Okay, so that's the mid review exam for December 12th and 13th. Then, of course, probably the weekend after that, we are going to have our Christmas party, okay? And then, of course, we are also going to have our Christmas break, okay? A chance for us to spend our time with our family and not minding um, anything or any lessons that we have for left, okay? So that's going to be um, the upcoming activities that we have. But, of course, I'm telling you, watch the MASH videos. Also watch all... Um, the science snippets that i'm posting okay but today's topic of course today's objective is for you to check your answers yesterday all right so uh what we're going to do is to start with our answers now okay we start with general education number one okay so again we start with general education this is 20 items Okay, so these are the items that you've answered yesterday. And of course, whenever we have a Saturday live stream, we don't have any sounds. 
and uh, no one's reading your question because of course um, we had a poll before and many people said they don't want any sounds okay they don't want any distractions and so if this it, it was your first time yesterday to watch us and uh, you might be wondering why there is no audio okay so we we actually do not have any audio and of course you are asked not to comment your answer because you are going to be posting your answer on um the comment section of kurung pinoy's official facebook page all right so we started our discussion but before that please don't forget to uh like this video if you're watching us on youtube okay we we have almost 100 people watching on youtube uh, only a few people have liked our video please go ahead and like our video youtubers and if you're watching us on facebook please go ahead and um react to this video heart this video um like this video okay and you may also share this video share it in your youtube accounts start a watch party tag a friend Okay, thank you so much, Paul, for all of you who've already started a watch party, for all of you who've already shared our video. Maraming salamat, Paul. All right, we start with question number one, general education. Again, please do like our video, react to our video, share our video, tag a friend. We start with question number one. Okay, question number one here. What are the prime factors of 273? What's your answer for number one? Maraming salamat, Ma'am Joy Dairit, for your maagang pakape, for your paayuda. Okay, so super chat on YouTube. Thank you so much, Ma'am Joy, also for yesterday's ayuda. Maraming salamat po. Okay, good evening po sa inyong lahat. Good evening, po. Uh, I'm so sorry, Ma'am Alvarez, Axel, Maricel, wala po tayong GCash. So one, um, one uh, option po for you is to uh, comment with a super chat or super sticker during our live stream. So you have to go to to uh, YouTube. If you're watching us now, she's watching us now on Facebook, you can go to YouTube and uh, pay through our live stream. All right, now many of you are answering letter C dito sa YouTube. Ganun din dito sa Facebook. Okay, so letter C then. All right, now, oh, okay, given na pala yung ating answer, I'm so sorry. The prime factors, we're looking for the prime prime factors of 273 and then of course when you say prime you know this to be a number whose factors are just itself and one okay so pag sinabi mong factors these are the numbers that we use to get a certain product okay these are the numbers that we multiply to get a certain product so when you say prime number ito po yung mga numbers na wala siyang other factors but one and itself so that means if you're looking at your definition of prime factors uh your Letter B is already going to be wrong, okay? Because six and nine, these are not prime numbers. They still have other factors. They have three and two for six, and you have, uh, for nine, you have three multiplied by three, okay? So these are not prime numbers. These are not prime factors. And so letter B is already going to be wrong. Now, um, if you look at letter A, two times three, that's six times 13, six times three would be 18. Our number here is 273 ending with three. So that means this is wrong. This is also wrong. You know that letter C is the answer, okay? I, I'm not going to discuss that really anymore because you see that letter C is our answer, okay? So again, make sure uh, that uh, you read the questions carefully and that of course, you know your table of multiplication. Pinamemorize yung table of multiplication sa atin elementary pa lang tayo, di ba? Ang dami kong iyak sa table of multiplication. All right, but of course, we know, lalong-lalo na ngayon, pag hindi mo memorize your table of multiplication mo, lalong-lalo na ngayon, no, right now, you are having a lot of regrets, okay? Nagsisisi ka talaga dahil napaka-importante po ng table of multi multiplication, lalong-lalo na sa math, okay? That's like the Bible in math. All right, so that would be the answer for question number one, letter C. We go to question number two. Question number two is still in math, okay? Category is still math. Which of the following is a product of 13 and an integer? 
Okay, when you say integer, of course, that's a counting number. So which one is which one is a product of 13 and an integer? What is the correct answer? Watching from Bula Camarines Sur, Bula or Bula, Sir Noel de Guzman. Hello, po. Watching from Negros Oriental, malapit lapit lang sa amin. Sir Pepe Olpos. Good evening, po. Ma'am Fiona's soul. Marami salamat for starting a watch party. Also, Ma'am Samantha Moralde, thank you for starting a watch party. Good evening po sa lahat. Uh, Ma Mary Rose Lucido, thanks for starting a watch party po. Good evening from Nai Cavite, that's from Sir Curson Yanan. Ma'am Alvarez Axel Maricel, thank you po for sharing our video. Okay, now a lot of people in on YouTube are answering with letter A. Watching from Cebu, Talisay Cebu. Uh, Ma'am Neram ba to? Uh, Ma'am Neram ni Suwak. Marami po akong mga relatives dyan, yung mga Saison po. Uh, tung, Saison Patindol, yung, uh, yung apelido po nila from Talisay Cebu. Good evening, everyone watching from Bacolod City, just very near our place in Iloilo, DK Villaruel Milestone Corp Corporation, Corp. Okay, we used to have, um, bakit ba nag-automatic ito? Teka po. Uh, Naka-timer yata ang ating questions. Teka. Let me just check our, our questions po. All right, so again, um, many of you are answering with letter A dito sa YouTube, dito sa Facebook. Wala pa ako nakikita ng answer from Facebook. Ayun, letter A din. Karamihan din ay, ay letter A. All right, so again, the question is, which of the following is a product of 13 and an integer? Okay, so again, 13 and a counting number. Now, as you can see, titingnan mo pa lamang, alam mo na yung sagot, no? Sa math, no? Sa left, ang math po sa left, titingnan mo lamang, alam mo na yung, yung sagot. Alam mo na yung 13, 13 yung ating hinahanap, no? So we are looking for the multiple of uh, 13. 13 or 1,326 dito, you have the, the numbers 13. And you know that 13, of course, is divisible by 13. And 26, of course, is also divisible by 13. Because that would just be 13 times 2. So alam niyo na, that the correct answer would be letter A, okay? 13 or 1,323, that's not divisible by 13. Because uh, 23 is not divisible by 13, ganun din sa 14, ganun din of course for 131. So the correct answer would be letter A. Letter A ang tamang sagot for question number 2. Okay? Now we go to number 3. How many days are needed after which an enrolled bill becomes a law? How many days do we need before an enrolled bill becomes a law? Watching with my crush, sabi ni Ma'am uh, ni Sir Jewel to si Ma'am Maylin Pontillas. Okay, now you have your explanation here. Uh, the the tip or the term that we have here is enrolled. The term enrolled after both houses have given final appro approval to a bill, a final copy of the bill known as the enrolled bill shall be printed and certified as correct by the Secretary of the Senate and the Secretary General of the House of Representatives, after which it will be signed by the Speaker of the House and the Senate President. Kaya po pinag-aagawan yung uh, Speakership of the House, di ba? Ang tagal pa na pinag-aagawan yung pagiging Speaker ng House between the two islands. Okay, so yung sinasabi pong enrolled bill, ang ibig sabihin nito is that's already the final copy of the bill. That's already the final copy of the bill. It is printed and then it should be it should be signed by the Speaker of the House and the Senate President. A bill may become a law even without the President's signature if the President does not sign it within 30 days from receipt in his office. A bill may also become a law without the President's signature if Congress overrides a presidential veto by two-thirds of the vote. Okay, palagi itong lumalabas sa civil service. Okay, so these are some of the things that will always come out in civil service. Of course, also comes out in your let. So the correct answer would be letter B. 
that would be 30 days. Okay, let me check uh, one more time our slides dahil naka-automatic po siya. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so we proceed with question number four. Number four, this is in math, uh, not in math, in English. Okay, this is in English. What is the correct answer for number four? What's your answer for number four? Good evening, watching from Binangon and Rizal. That's from Ma'am Ma Nancy Nalam. Good evening, Paul. Ma'am Mary Rose Lucido, thank you for starting a watch party. Watching from Kapookan Leyte, Sir Igano Kaloy. Good evening po. Now, karamihan dito sa Facebook, their answer is letter C. Okay, now many of you also on YouTube are answering with letter C. Of course, that would be the correct answer, but wala nang answer to. Okay, sorry. All right, so that should be the correct answer. Letter C po ang tamang sagot dito for um, question number four. Teka po, technical difficulties tayo. Balikan po ulit ang ating slideshow. Saglit lamang po, saglit lamang. All right, so again, for number four, the correct answer is letter C. That should be obscenity, okay? Obscenity po, ibig sabihin ay ka, kahalayan, okay? Sa so profanity, kahalayan, pagiging bastos ng isang programa. That's why it was uh, suspended from television. Okay, so again, for number four, the correct answer would be letter C. Letter C, ang tamang sagot. All right, now we go for, uh, we go to number five. What figure of speech is O Wild West Wind? What figure of speech is the answer for number five? Good evening from Pangasinan, Ma'am Priscilla Liamas. Good evening, Paul. Watching, okay, watching with my crush. Uh, we would like to welcome Ma'am Catherine Marcadejas. Tama po ba? So first time ni Ma'am Ma Catherine. Watching from Lawang, Northern Samar. That's Sir Pio Martin Rosales. Okay, now many of you on YouTube are answering with number five, letter D. Okay, dito sa Facebook, ganun din. Letter D din yung karamihang sagot dito sa Facebook. All right, now let's take a look at the different figures of speech that we have here. For letter A, we have metaphor. You know metaphor to be very similar to simile. Meron na po tayong video on this. Please go check our YouTube video on the figures of speech. Meron pong mga examples and meron din pong Filipino translation. Okay, so when you say metaphor, this is very similar to simile. The only difference is that in simile, you use the words like and as, okay, to compare or to show likeness of two objects or two things. In metaphor naman, there is no use of as and like. Now, hyperbole, of course, this is your pagmamalabis. This is exaggeration. For example, you say, she cried me a river, okay? Or, um, uh, I, oh, I died when he left me, okay? So that's hyperbole. Now, irony naman, yung irony mo naman, this is uh, putting together words that are opposite or the words that are antonyms in uh, the same sentence. So when you say, 
um, I can hear a deafening silence. That would be an irony. Okay, so irony po siya. Now, of course, the correct answer would be apostrophe. In Filipino, this is pagtawag. So this is trying to mention someone or something that is not actually around. Okay, someone or something that's not around that is going to be apostrophe. So letter D, apostrophe, is the correct answer for question number five. Okay, number six, several factors must be assessed to arrive at a sound blank. Is it change, B, decision, C, problem, D, query. Watching from Kinugitan, Misamis Oriental, thank you for starting a watch party. Mom Christine Joy Salvacion Liagas. Mom Kimberly Cordova or Cordova, thank you po for starting a watch party. Shout out sa anak ni, ni Sir T. Choi Abumali na si Johanisa, Johanisa. Hello po. Good evening po, Sir Brian Analyst, Analyst Bry. Watching from Japan, Konnichiwa, Sir Mark Adrian Rabago. Watching from Botolan, Zambales, Sir Raymond Datugan. Hello po. Yes, na shout out po na from Japan, Sir Mark Adrian Rabago. From Panabo City, Davao del Norte, Sir Neil Pantavaliente. Okay, so going back to our, to our problem here, okay, to our question, several factors must be assessed to arrive at a sound. People on YouTube are answering letter B, okay, here on Facebook. Are also answer with letter B and of course that would be the correct answer okay before you arrive at a sound decision several factors must be assessed must be evaluated must be analyzed parang sa love life mo lang yan bago mo siya sagutin eh i-analyze mo mula, muna lahat ng factors mabubuhay ka ba niya okay responsable ba siya mabait ba siya may galang ba siya sa magulang mo okay Napa, oh, all right, so napakaraming factors dapat mong i-consider. Hindi sapat na love lang, di ba? Hindi sapat yung love, love lang. Pag love lang at walang pagkain, magugutom din kayo. Okay? So eventually, maghihiwalay din kayo pag marami ng problema. All right? So you have to consider several factors before you arrive at a sound decision, at a healthy decision. Okay? So letter B is the correct answer for question number six. Now we go to number seven. The cause of power interruption was a blank connection. What's the correct answer for number seven? Watching from Bayog, Mindanao. Sir Alan Malina, thank you for starting a watch party, Sir Alan. Watching from Cebu, Sir Ariel Carballo Malusay. Watching from Kuwait, hello po, Ma'am Cheryl Guma. Ma'am Mary Jean Martirez Jaime, thank you po for starting a watch party. Ganon din kay Ma'am Melanie Coreses Penamente. Ma'am Lou Devina, thank you po for starting a watch party. Watching from Katayingan, Masbate. Uh, greetings now to the family, Quambot, Yurag Cervantes, and all his neighbors. Wow, tatakbo ka, sir. Sir Amil Quambot. From Cebu, Sir Vils Lofar Bolok Bolok. All right, now going back to number seven, the cause of power interruption was a blank connection. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer? Uh, medyo nagkarambula na yung letter A and letter B. Okay. Marami na, iba-iba na yung answer nyo. Ha? May letter A and letter B. Now, tingnan natin. Ang letter B mo, mo po, letter B and C nyo dito, these are verb. Okay? You all know what, that when you say, um, when you say verb, uh, ito po yung mga action words natin. Okay? So, when you say lose, we will lose. Ibig sabihin, ay natalo kayo. We will lose. Your uh, letter B lost dito, Po pwede siyang verb, po pwede din siyang adjective. Okay? So, we lost. Po pwede siyang um, past 
past form ng, ng verb mo na lose, ibig sabihin ng lose again, is natalo. Yung lost mo naman, again, this can be the past form of your verb na lose. Okay? We lost yesterday. Or po pwede din siyang adjective. For example, uh, you say, I have given the lost wallet to the information center. Okay? So po pwede siyang adjective that's trying to describe a certain noun. Okay? Dinedescribe niya yung noun. Which wallet? The one that was lost. Okay, so lost. Or po pwede din siyang past form ng lose mo na verb. Okay? Now, losing, this is still your verb but in ing form. Okay? So, for example, whenever you use the ing form of the verb, that means the action is still not done. The action is still not completed. So, for example, uh, the Philippines and Japan are uh, having a basketball game and it's still ongoing but you can see that the gap between Japan and the Philippines uh, is very big and uh, syempre winner yung Philippines uh, di ba minsan na nga lang tayong mangarap dapat eh uh, itodo na natin okay so since this is just an example winner papuntang winner na yung Philippines patapos na kasi yung fourth quarter but of course this is still not done because you're using the verb ing okay so you say Japan is losing um losing in this game okay so you can you can say that now on lose naman this is an adjective whenever you say adjective ito po yung mga words that will describe your noun or your pronoun and this would mean uh maluwag okay so lose siya lose it is maluwag it's not it's not fixed okay it's not steady and so the correct answer would be letter a it's a loose connection loose po maluwag okay so letter a is the correct answer for question number seven. All right, we go to number eight. A sea is a great body of salty water, smaller than ocean, more or less landlocked, which is a large part of the ocean or a sea partly enclosed by land. Is it letter A, straight, letter B, canal, letter C, lake, or letter D, gulf? Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number eight? Ma'am Cindy and Ma'am Maricel Maneha on Facebook, thank you po for starting a watch party. Watching from Pangasinan, Ma'am Santos Makarana Shiril or Shiril. Uh -huh. All right, now, dito sa YouTube, karamihan yung sagot ay letter D. Good evening, watching from Abu Dhabi, Ma'am Gemma Cinco. Ingat po kayo dyan. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the different examples or the different terms that we have here. Okay, so sabi dito, a sea daw is a smaller body of water, of, of smaller body of salty water, it's smaller than the ocean, more or less it is landlocked. So what do we call the large part of the ocean or sea which is partly enclosed by land? Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot dito? When you say straight, this is a narrow area of sea that connects two larger areas of, of, of sea. Okay, so pag sinabi mong sea, meron kang dalawang malalaking sea, tapos meron kang connector between the two of them that is narrower, you'd call that connector a straight. Okay, when, for example, you say the Strait of uh, Gibraltar. Okay, so that's an example of a straight. When you say canal naman, this is a long, thin stretch of water. And what's important here is the term artificial. It is artificially made either for boats to travel along or for taking water from one, one area to another. So classic example of this would be your Panama Canal, your, your Swiss Canal, okay? So that's your canal. It is artificially made long stretch of water, usually for the passage of boats. Now you also have the term lake. We all know what a lake is. It's a large area of water, but this is not salty water, which makes it uh, wrong din, no? Then yung lake mo, usually it's fresh water, hindi siya salty. It's surrounded by land and not connected to the ocean, except by rivers or streams. And of course, the correct answer would be letter D, okay? That's a very large area of sea surrounded on three sides by a coast. And so that would be the correct answer. It is more or less... Is partly enclosed by land. Yung lake mo kasi is completely enclosed by land and it's fresh water. Okay, so letter D, ang tamang sagot. Letter D is the correct answer. All right, now we go to number nine, the protein shell of a virus 
is called nucleolus, nucleic acid, nucleus, or letter D, capsid. This is, of course, in science. Canal is mabaho, sabi ni Press. Grand Canal in Taguig, yes. Uh, may lagnat daw si Ma'am Angel Grace Flores. Pagaling po kayo, Ma'am. Alright, number nine, what's your answer? Karamihan sa inyo sa YouTube, your answer is letter D. Tubod, tubod straight. May tubod straight kayo. Al tubod. Is uh, straight ba yung tawag sa tubod? Uh, tubod ba yung tawag sa straight sa Cebu? Alright, so again for number nine, the protein shell of a virus is called what? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number nine? The correct answer, of course, here would be letter D. That would be capsid. Okay, so capsid po ang tamang sagot for number nine. Watching from Tangub City, we have Sir Melfred Simbahon. Okay, Isabella, Sir Loreto. All right, so again, that would be letter D, capsid. Capsid is the protein shell of a virus. So, so this is like the protective covering of your virus. Kaya hindi sila agad-agad namamatay, okay, because of their capsid. Your nucleolus, ang nucleolus mo po, that would be for, uh, yung nucleolus mo, that's just a part of your nucleus, okay? If you if you have your nucleus, di ba, you know that the nucleus is like the brain of the cell. If you have this as the cell, inside the cell, the big spherical body there, that would be the nucleus. Siya yung, um, uh, naka-enclose dyan yung DNA mo, all the genetic material that you have. Okay, your nucleic acid, this is, uh, this has two Two types, meron kong RNA and meron kong DNA. In our previous live streams, we've already discussed this. And if you you go to YouTube, we also have three separate videos on the the things about the cells. So meron po doon different parts of the cell. Lumalabas po yan sa let. So tingnan mo, nyo po yung video natin na yan. Under siya sa cells, no? under siya sa about the cells na playlist natin. Different parts of the cells. And of course, you also have the differences between your plant cell and your animal cell, the differences between your prokaryotic cell and your eukaryotic cell. So, tingnan nyo po yung lahat ng videos na yan. So, again, when using nucleic acid, you have two types for this. You have your RNA, which functions for the making of proteins, and you have your DNA, which is the genetic material in the cell. So, yan po yung tina-transfer from parents to offspring. Kaya ikaw, hindi mo kamukha yung kapit kapitbahay nyo, yung kamukha mo ay either yung tatay mo or yung nanay mo or combination dahil sa genes. Okay? So that's because of your DNA. That's because of the DNA. Yung nucleus naman, that's found at the center of the cell that is like the brain of the cell, controls all the functions, all the processes within the cell. Now when you say nucleolus, this is a spherical body within the nucleus. Nasa loob siya ng nucleus. And the function is to make ribosomes. Yung ribosomes mo naman is for the making of protein. Proteins. So again, I will not be going into details about this because we have separate videos on this on YouTube. So if you can, just go to YouTube and watch all three videos that we have. All right? So that's the correct answer, letter D. That's capsid. Now we go to number 10. This is still science. We're talking about ecosystems here. What do you think is the correct answer for question number 10? Mamona Felisan, thank you for starting a watch party. Sir Soy E. Isoy from Oroqueta City, the city of good life. Wow. Thank you, Paul, for starting a watch party. Watching from Mati City, Sir Alshid Abdullah Limbing. Uh -huh. Mom Christine Joy Salvacion Liagas, thank you, Paul, for starting a watch party. Mm -hmm. All right, so dito sa YouTube, karamihan yung answer mo, uh, yung answer po ninyo ay letter D. Dito naman sa Facebook, okay, ganun din. Uh, Sir Saojo, thank you po for starting a watch party. Sir Hener Laguardia, our good friend in Saudi. Hello, Sir Hener. Uh, thank you po for starting a watch party. I always watch your YouTube video. Uh, not your YouTube videos, your TikTok video, videos. 
Okay, so the correct answer, of course, would be letter D. That's the Sahara Desert. Okay, that's the largest desert ecosystem that we have. Of course, the Sahara is found in Africa. Okay, Gobi Desert is found in Mongolia. Chihuahua Desert is found in Mexico. Okay, so this is in Mexico, Chihuahua Desert. Your Gobi Desert is found in Mongolia. Kalayaan group of islands naman ito. No? Alam natin kung nasaan ito yung pinag-aagawan na group of islands. Okay, so that's letter A. Kalayaan. But the correct answer, of course, would be letter D, Sahara, Sahara Desert. Okay, so that's the correct answer for question number 10. We go to number 11. Who was elected Speaker of the Philippine Assembly in 1907? Manuel Rojas, Manuel Quezon, Claro Emrecto, or Sergio Osmeña Sr.? Watching from home, in Das Marinas Cavite, shout out sa husband. Na naka-confine ngayon sa hospital. Okay, I love you daw. Okay, Sir Alan Alcantara. Wow, sana all. Okay, that's coming from Ma Maricel Alcantara. Pagaling po kayo, Sir Alan Alcantara. That's from Ma Maricel Alcantara. Uh -huh. All right, now many people on YouTube are answering letter D. Pa shout out sa Vice President ng MMBA, Masbate Muslim Brothers Association, Junaid Barodi. Junaid Barodi. Yan po pangalan niya. Okay, that's from Sir T. Choi Abumalik. Um, from Zamboanga, pa shout out. That's from Fadilia Madtahil. Fadila Madtahil, Ma'am Fadila Madtahil Satal. Hello po. Okay, now what do you think is the correct answer for number 11? A lot of you are answering letter C. Okay, can I mean say new letter C yung sagot? Who was elected Speaker of the Philippine Assembly in 1907? You have the following choices. Manuel Rojas, Manuel Quezon, Claro M. Recto, Sergio Osmeña Sr. Now, Manuel Rojas, of course, that's the Lolo of Mar Rojas. Okay, he is known as uh, the first president of the Third Republic. So, siya po yung kauna-unang kauna presidente after the Commonwealth period. Okay, that's Manuel Rojas. He's also known for parity rights. When you say parity rights, merit equal rights yung foreigners and Filipinos, especially the Americans and the Filipinos over the, nat the natural resources of the Philippines. So, that's a parity rights na pinirmahan ni Lagtaan ni Manuel Rojas. Manuel Quezon, of course, we know him to be the aman ng wikang pambansa. Okay, so that's Manuel Quezon. On. Alam natin yan. Claro Imrecto, he has never become a president. He, he was never a president. He is also a lolo of Ralph Recto. Sergio Osmeña Sr., of course, uh, galing siya sa Cebu. Ang kanyang mga Osmeña, no? Enye po ito dapat. Ang kanyang mga Osmeña sa Cebu. And that would be the correct answer. That's Sergio Osmeña Sr., the first speaker of the Philippine Assembly. Okay, he was the first speaker of the Philippine Assembly, now House of Representatives, pinag-aagawang pwesto between the two Alans, no? And finally, eh, nailipat na nga yung corona kay Lord Alan Velasco. He was elected in 1907 at the age of 29. He was the youngest ever to become speaker and the longest to have held the speakership. Uh, from 1907 until 1922. And of course, we know uh, Serge Osmeña, Sergio Osmeña, to be also one of our presidents. Okay, so Sina Serge Osmeña, of course, is uh, kaapo apuhan na niya, apo na niya. Okay, so the correct answer, of course, would be letter D, that's Sergio Osmeña. Now we go to number 12, technology blank dramatically in the 21st century. Is it letter A, was improved? Letter B, has improved? Letter C, is improved? Letter D, did improved? Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Sergio Ismenya po yung tamang sagot for our previous question. Ma'am Angelina DT, thank you po for starting a watch. Ah, no, sorry. Ma'am Mona Felisan pala. Thank you for starting a watch party and for tagging your friend. Shout out watching from Sibuyan Romblon. Thank you for starting a watch party. That's Sir R.D. Canulo. Sir R.D., hello po. 
Uh, Magsha-shoutout din ako, nananawagan po ako sa aking asawa na nasa baba. Kung maaari lamang po, ay padala mo po ako ng pagkain at kape. Maraming salamat, gutom na po ako. Thank you. Love you. Sir Ram, please give me some food. Thanks. Uh, shout out sa ex ko na pinagpalit ako sa two months. Iniwan yung 12 years na samahan. Seryoso to, Sir Loreto. Hi po, from South Cotabato. That's from Sir Felix Villanueva Osano. Alright, so again, number 12, technology blank dramatically in the 21st century. Is it was improved, has improved? is improved or did improved okay now you know that did improve that this is grammatically wrong whenever you use the term did do does does do does did can could will would all those modal verbs you don't use the ed form or the d form the past form you simply use the base form so hindi po pwedeng did improved dapat eh did improve lamang walang d is improved this can also be used okay technology is improved and was improved, halos magkapareho sila. That means uh, these are in the um, passive voice, okay? Passive voice of the verb po siya. Okay? Passive voice of the verb, meaning yung subject mo is not the actual, uh, is not the actor of the verb. Hindi siya yung tagagawa ng verb, siya yung tagatanggap ng verb, okay? Was improved, that's in the past form. And of course, is improved, that is in the present form. But of course, we know that the correct answer here should be has improved. Technology has improved dramatically in the 21st century. Now, this is your has or have plus PP. This is your present perfect form. Nasa present perfect tense po yung ating verb dito. Which is actually used when something that has started in the past still has a bearing in the present and will probably continue in the future. Okay, so from the past, uh, it's still ongoing until now and will probably continue in the future. And we know that to be true for technology. Okay, it has improved dramatically in the 21st century. It's still improving until now. We have so many apps that has just come out. If before, if pa friends or friends or lang tayo, no? Nung lumabas yung Facebook, eh, medyo boring sa paningin natin dahil walang mga nag-glitter, glitter, walang, hindi katulad ng MySpace na medyo may mga maraming backgrounds, pa iba-iba ka ng backgrounds, naging Facebook, and then eventually, meron na tayong iba-ibang apps ngayon. May Instagram, may TikTok, may Smule, kung ano-ano pang apps ninyo, okay? And so, has improved is the correct answer. And we know that it's still continuously improving. Okay, hanggang ngayon, you know, uh, marami pa rin improvement sa ating technology. All right, so has improved is the correct answer for number 12. Now, we go to number 13, very easy. Which symbol is used to open a document? Control plus S, Control plus D, Control plus O, Control plus V. Sagit lamang po. Uh, sana all my breakfast. Kayo wala kayong breakfast. Charing lang. Okay. All right, so we have number 13, which which symbol is used to open a document? Control S, um, Control D, Control O, Control V. Okay, the correct answer, of course, would be letter C. That's Control O, okay? This is to open a document. Control O is the correct answer, okay? So Control O po. That will be the correct answer, letter C. Control S mo, that's for saving. Control D mo, that's for, I'm not sure if this would work for deleting. Okay, but usually now, um, Control D. Then, of course, you have Control V for pasting. Okay, Control V po for pasting. Control C is for copy. Then, Control V for pasting. Control X mo naman, that's for cut. Okay, so cut po yan. All right, so the correct answer, of course, would be Letter C for number 13. Now, we go to number 14. Ang kahulugan ng salubong ang kilay ay, this is very easy. Ma'am Donna Jane Riva, thank you po for starting a watch party. Ganon din kay Sir Sean Anthony Larazi. Maraming salamat po. Sir Henel Laguardia, thank you. Sasagot din si Sir Henel.
Ma'am Norsina May Abalas Magain Tanhalin. Thank you so much po for starting a watch party. Ganon din kay Ma'am Christine Joy Salvacion Liagas. Thank you po. And shout out sa friend niya na si Rain Danoy Galarse. O, oh, ikapangalan ni Rain. Hello po. Good evening, Sir Sean Anthony Larazi. All right, nakaramihan sa inyo on YouTube, your answer is letter A. Ganon din dito sa Facebook, of course, that's the correct answer. Letter A, salubong ang kilay. Okay, so yan yung itsura natin pag galit tayo, di ba? Nakasalubong yung kilay natin. All right, so letter A, ang tamang sagot. All right, now we go to number 15. Pinaaalahanan ako na magsikap patlang mabuti sa pag-aaral. Is it letter A, tunay? Letter B, nang? Letter C, nang? Letter D, higit? Letter B is nang with an N-A-N-G? And letter C is nang with an NG. Oh, ayan na. May nag-MMK na dito sa YouTube. May iniwan. Okay, iniwan ng 12 years. Pinagpalit sa 2 months. Uh, Sir Alan Malinao, first time yata ni Sir Alan. We have 20 items for Paul for Gen Ed. So right after our Gen Ed discussion, uh, we will go to our professional uh, education discussion, separate live stream po siya. And then we're we are doing our live streams po Saturdays and Sundays, 7 p.m. Philippine time. So pag Saturday po, questions lamang siya, sasagutan nyo yan. And then by uh, Sunday, that's when we discuss the items, okay? And then we are, we're also writing the names of our top notchers. So if you have um, answered on time on Saturday after po niyan, eh, meron po kami pinupost sa aming uh, Facebook page kung saan po kayo nanonood ng live ngayon sa Facebook. And then you can comment your answer there po. And then we get um, our top notchers. From uh, Mona Felisan, shout out sa kanyang mama na si Ma'am Delilah Felisan and sa kanyang manghod na si Stephen Lloyd. Hello po. Nakiki-answer-answer answer din daw. Uh, there's a question here. Ma'am Chris Agrabio Risonable is asking, ano daw yung answer for numbers 12 and 13? If you can answer, Ma'am Chris, ilagay niyo po sa comment box yung answer for 12 and 13. All right, now again for number 15, pinaaalahanan ako na magsikap patlang mabuti sa pag-aaral. Pag magsikap na uh, nang, ang tamang sagot dito ay nang, pero hindi natin alam kung saan nang. Ano ba yung difference ng dalawang nang na nandito? Okay, now when you say, of course the correct answer is nang, N-A-N-G, that's letter B, that would be the correct answer. Yung nang po na N-A-N-G, that would be an adverb. Okay, so pang-abay po siya, adverb siya, pang-abay, ibig sabihin ay um, tinutukoy niya, dinedescribe niya yung isang adjective at isa din pang-abay na katulad niya. So pwedeng yung verb, yung adjective, or yung pang-abay na katulad niya. So sumigaw siya ng malakas. Sumigaw siya ng malakas. Paano siya sumigaw? Nang malakas. Okay, so that means nung sumigaw siya, ay masyadong malakas yung pagsigaw niya. Yung nang niya naman, this is followed by an object. Okay, so for example, you say, bumili ako ng, anong binili mo? Bumili ako ng sapatos. Okay, so that should be NG. Okay, so that should be NG. Um, it's um, followed by an object. Okay, so when you say sumigaw siya ng malakas, this has a different meaning than the other sentence that we have here. So again, when we say sumigaw siya ng malakas, N-A-N-G, Paano siya sumigaw? Malakas ang kanyang pagsigaw. Sumigaw siya ng malakas naman, ibig sabihin yung sinigaw niya ay ang word na malakas. Okay? So yung sinigaw niya ay malakas. Ganun yung sinigaw niya. Okay? Dahil uh, malakas dito is your object. Because NG is followed by an object. Okay? But the correct answer, of course, for letter for number 15, that would be letter B. Letter B, N-A-N-G. All right, now we go to number 16. Okay, this is in math. Mr. Lazanos has incurred the following expenses in his trips to the Cebu Islands. 3,200 pesos, 2,500 pesos, and 1,500 pesos. What percent of this total monthly budget of 40,000 pesos did he spend for this trip? 
what is your answer for question number 16? Liguak ba, Ma'am Sam? Naliguak si Ma'am Sam? Okay, now karamihan sa YouTube, your answer is letter C. Dito sa Facebook, my C. Mm -hmm. Okay, marami din naman letter C dito. 18%. Of course, we are given the different amounts as his expenses. So what we'll do is we add the amounts first. Okay, so we get the total. Okay, and we get the percentage of the total out of the budget, which is 40,000. Okay, so we get the total first. That's 3,200 plus 2,500 plus 1,500. The total will be 7,200 pesos. Okay, now the question is, what percent of 40,000 is 7,200? What percent of 40,000 is 7,200? Uh, 7, now remember that in math, I've already told you this before, the term of means multiply. Okay, so this is multiplication. And of course, the term is means equals. Okay, so that means blank percent times 40,000 equals 7,200. Okay, blank percent times 40,000 times would be of, and equals would be is here, is 7,200. Now, um, the left side of our equation here, this simply means we are multiplying our unknown by 40,000. So we can just easily say 40,000 X, that's 40,000 multiplied by X, our unknown, equals 7,200. If we are going to um, isolate your x here, we need to divide both sides by 40,000. Of course, since x here and 40,000 are multiplied, we need to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. And so we divide both sides by 40,000. By doing that, we cancel the 40,000 that we have here. We are left with 7,200 divided by 40,000. That would be equal to our x. And 7,200 divided by 40,000, that will give us 0 0.18. This is still in decimal form. Now, we are looking for the percentage, okay? Percentage po yung hinahanap natin. And so, we multiply this by 100. And so, we can just move the decimal point two times to the right. And write, of course, your percentage sign. So, the correct answer would be letter C. That's 18%. 18%. Ang tamang sagot for question number 16. All right, now we go to number 17. A recipe calls for two eggs for every cup of flour. If a head chef uses 28 cups of flour, how many eggs will he need? Thank you, Ma'am Eileen Manaay, for sharing our video, for starting a watch party. Maraming salamat po. Genocide ba? <laughs> Di na nakachamba? Oh, may mga kumakanta na dito. Naloka na yung mga... Uh, nabaliw na yung mga taga-YouTube. Okay, a recipe calls for two eggs for every cup of flour. If a head chef uses 28 cups of flour, how many eggs will he need? Okay, so this is very simple. This is just uh, ratio and proportion, okay? Now, for two eggs or for every cup of flour, okay, you, you will use two eggs. So two eggs for every cup of flour. That means two eggs is two, one cup of flour. Now, we are looking for the number of eggs um, is two that we are going to need for 28 cups of flour. Now, remember in your ratio and proportion, the extremes, when you multiply the extremes, their product should be equal to the product of your means, okay? So that would be, how do we solve this? We multiply 2 by 28, so that would give you 56. And you divide that by your number here so that you can get your x, your unknown. Okay, so that's 2 multiplied by 28, giving you 56, divided by 1. Any number divided by 1, the answer would just be the same number. And so the correct answer, of course, would be letter B, that's 56. 56 would be the correct answer. Pa shout out sa karoommate ni Sir Melfred Simbahon sa Tangob City, Miss Occidental. Hello po. 
All right, so the correct answer, of course, would be letter B, that's 56, letter B, 56. Now we go to question number 18, third to the last question. It's almost 8 o'clock. Isang komunikasyong pampubliko na nagpapaliwanag at nanghihikayat, binibig ka sa harap ng madla. Okay, nanghihikayat, nagpapaliwanag, binibig ka sa harap ng madla. Ang anekdotam niyo po ay hindi, hindi siya binibig ka, ito'y binabasa. Talambuhay, ganun din naman, no? Sa so, talambuhay, po pwedeng uh, binabasa, po pwede mo din namang basahin o po pwede mo din namang bigkasin, pero hindi siya nanghihikayat. Ganun din sa balita, okay? Ginagawa siya sa harap ng madla. But of course, we also have our printed news na nasa newspaper lamang. The correct answer, of course, would be letter D. That would be talumpate, speech. Okay, so speech is the correct answer. Letter D po ang tamang sagot for question number 18. Ma'am Donna Jane Riva, thank you so much for starting a watch party. Ganun din kay Sir Mangru or Ma'am Mangru EA and Sir Melvin Ligay, Ligan Boyore. Thank you po. All right, now we go to number 19, second to the last. Every co-curricular activity has blank merits. Letter A, theirs. Letter B, its. Letter C, their. Letter D, it. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 19? Bonus ulit. Mom Hazel, thank you, Paul, for sharing our video. That's on you on Facebook. Okay, now, dito sa ating question number 19, ninahanap natin yung tamang sagot, yung, yung the correct word that would complete the sentence, so we'll make the, the sentence correct. Every co-curricular activity has blank merits. Every co-curricular activity has blank merits. Now, when you say every, when you use the term every, this is singular, okay? So, tama po yan na singular siya, hindi siya dapat activities. Okay, so activity lamang siya, that should be in singular form. That is correct. Every co-curricular activity has blank merits. That means we cannot use theirs, we cannot use their, because these are uh, pronouns that we use for plural form. Okay, so plural form po sila, and that means we cannot use them. Is it its or it? Okay, has its merits. Even if uh, pakinggan mo lamang, saan ba dito yung... Um, uh, which one would sound would sound correct or would sound better? Every co-curricular activity has its merits or every co-curricular activity has it merits? Okay, of course, the correct answer here would be letter B, has its merits. Now, it's here. This is um, showing possessiveness, okay? It's showing possession. When you use the term its without the apostrophe, ah, yung wala pong apostrophe, this is showing possession. Ibig sabihin eh, something belongs to an object, okay? Because it's, of course, this is used for something or for an object. We don't use this for a person because if we are talking about a person, we use hers or his, okay? So, for example, you say, um, the dog is very cute. Its color, okay, its color, yung color niya, yung kulay niya, that means possession. Its color is black and white, okay? So that's it. Yung its mo naman na may apostrophe, that would of course uh, be a contracted, contracted siya, no? That means merong niremove na, na letter dito at pinalitan siya ng apostrophe. And that of course would mean it is, okay? So it is, it is pretty, okay? So you, when you say um, the dog is cute, its tail, its tail, ang kanyang, kanyang buntot, its tail is color black and white. It's, it's very beautiful, okay? It's very cuddly. It's very lovable. That means it is, okay? Yung, yung it's mo na may, na may apostrophe. And so it is very important po for you to know when to use your apostrophe. Uh, karamihan kong, or kalimitan kong nakikita ito sa Facebook, no, you're beautiful and you're beautiful. Okay, so napaka-importante po na alam natin kung alin yung tama dito. Yung you're beautiful mo, of course, that means there there was a letter that was removed and was, of course, replaced by your apostrophe. And this means you are beautiful. You're beautiful here means you are beautiful. So ito po yung tamang form. Ito po yung ilagay nyo pag nagko-comment kayo, pag nagpo-post kayo. Ganon din sa your welcome, yung your welcome nyo. You are welcome po yan, di po ba? So dapat po, eh, meron po tayong apostrophe because uh, meron pong ni-remove na letter dyan, yung space and yung letter na A 
At syempre, dapat yung your mo ay may apostrophe at may e. Okay? Because that means you're beautiful. You are beautiful. You're beautiful here, sentence one natin, that means ikaw ay maganda. You're beautiful. So, iba po siya sa you're beautiful. Dahil yung your mo dito na walang apostrophe at walang e, that means ang iyo. Okay, ang iyo. This shows possession. So, anong ibig sabihin? Ito, you're beautiful. You are beautiful. Maganda ka. So, ito naman, you're beautiful. Ang iyo ay maganda. Okay? So, pag ikaw yung nakatanggap ng comment na yan, or yung ng post na yan, you know that the meaning is different or the meaning is wrong. Okay? So, you're beautiful. Ang iyo ay maganda. Okay? Which makes it very awkward. Okay? So, that means... Napakalaki po ng difference na naibibigay ng ating apostrophe and tamang paggamit ng words natin, okay? So, you should know when to use the correct word. It should be apostrophe. Yung may apostrophe mo na, na your, yung daglat ng you are. Hindi po yung your na Y-O-U-R lamang. Okay? So, that's your number 19. Again, that's letter B, it's. Ganon din po yan sa your welcome, okay? Hindi pong your welcome. Ang iyo ay welcome. Welcome para ano? Okay, so you are welcome dapat. Okay, you are welcome dapat. All right, now we go to the last one for Gen Ed. Last one for Gen Ed. It's almost 8.05. Why does toothpaste help control tooth decay? It cools the mouth and prevent germs from multiplying. It removes bad odor that remains after eating. It neutralizes acidic food, food particles that remain in the mouth or it surrounds the teeth with protective substances. What do you think is the correct answer for question number 20? Number 20. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot for question number 20 natin? This is the last question for uh, our general education. And of course, after this, we will move on to our professional education. We have a separate, uh, separate live stream for professional education. Okay, to why does toothpaste help control tooth decay? The correct answer here, of course, would be letter C. It neutralizes acidic food particles that remain in the mouth, okay? That is acidity that, that would cause your tooth to decay, okay? So the correct answer would be letter C. Neutralizes acidic food, acidity in your mouth, okay? So letter C po ang tamang sagot for question number 20. Okay, so 20, the correct answer would be letter C. All right, so that ends our general education discussion. Again, we are coming back with professional education. So I will be ending this live stream and we will move to our professional education live stream. Now, please keep your scores because, of course, you will be adding your scores later to your professional education. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes.